Finally, we have uh, Mike Jordan from Berkeley. Just uh, let a few movements with the machine learning. Let's see what he thinks is coming next. Um, yeah, so I resonate with a lot of the issues we're talked about already. Um, I don't think it's so much a computational issue, though. I guess the framing was, what's, you know, what are the computational issues? And, and so I'd actually disagree with the, about the convexity story. I think these deep neural nets are not hard to optimize. You can get them to zero error with no trouble. And I think if you have a wide enough one, there's lots of paths. And uh, I think there's even some kind of folk wisdom that um, there's a paper, I think, that uh, from every point, there's actually a downhill path to the global optimal. Um, and so I don't think it's actually that that's, that, that there are a lot of problems there, but I don't think that's necessarily it. I still think it's all statistical. And I think I resonate to what a lot of Marina said. You know, we've borrowed the mathematics of statistics a lot. And we learned about covering numbers and so on and so forth and risks and so on, but we still don't think like statisticians. So we don't think about the data you gather today is probably not likely to be much like the data you get tomorrow. There's lots of changes, lots of biases. How was it sampled? Probably it was not sampled IID. Probably it's not a random sample. If you don't take that into account, you're going to make the wrong decisions and wrong inferences. And you'll, of course, you, if you validate, you'll find that out, but maybe it's too late. And, and so, you know, we've been developing machine learning in systems like search and vision and speech, where if you make an error, it's just a little bit of a pain. Someone gets a little annoyed. But if we're deploying them in, in finance, in medicine, in transportation, and so on and so forth, errors are going to be deaths, and errors are going to be chaos. And, and so we don't have, we're not ready for that world where we really have real confidence intervals on our outputs. We have these black boxes that give out an answer, right? And no one is, hardly anyone is talking enough about, well, are you sure about that? How, how sure are you? Um, so if you're going to go into the doctor's office in the future, the doctor will take your genome in addition to all your vital signs and all that, and they'll put it into a big system, um, uh, you know, that used machine learning. They'll have done all the data from all the other people, and maybe people like you, hopefully, not just random people, and all the results of all the, and it'll come out and say, the doctor will look at it and say, I, well, you know, the, the neural net output a number which was 0.62, and any number of 0.6, you have to have a liver operation. All right, what are you going to say? Um, well, you're just like a current CEO says, I'm not going to try, you know, tell me there's, you know, who, how that number rise and, and what are the confidence intervals? And if you say, well, the confidence interval is huge, I'm going to say, well, can I get more data? Yeah, oh, yeah, you better get some more data. And so, so uh, this is to me the issue. It's, it's building systems that are able to respect those kind of uh, uncertainties, making decisions. So, you know, you make a decision that in this image there's a cat. And you make a decision in the next image, there's a cat and so on. And you do that for days on end. Well, your error rate is now uncontrolled. For each decision, maybe you have a calibration. You know that your error rate is something. But what about an ensemble of decisions? And what about when the decisions are all related, which is the real life? Most decisions are related in various ways. Well, we're not talking about that. So anyway, statistical people talk about this a lot. And I keep my, my role in machine learning is keep people from, away from the idea this is just computation. This is inference, folks, in decision making. And so. You got to think like that. You got to think about my data set actually came from something out there. How did it arise? What am I trying to say about things out there in the world? And not, let's just not just borrow the techniques and the math and the theorems and, and, and all. Let's, 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 let's think about the, the, the whole style of, of, uh, of inference. Also, we talk about control. We're all kind of starting to get more now towards active things and control and all that. Well, control assumes you know causes. Right? Because if I just have a bunch of variables to wiggle and I have some desired outcome and I wiggle that and it doesn't cause that in any way, they're just correlated, well, I, I could wiggle it all day long and it's not gonna, nothing's gonna happen. And people assume you already know the vector of, uh, of uh, you know, um, control signals. And you wiggle it and you see what reinforcement signal you get at the end. Well, in real life, you don't know. You're a public policy planner or city planner. You don't know what variables to change. Should I put a stop sign there or whatever? And so you've got a reason from your data to do causal inference. And again, it's, there's a whole field of that in machine learning. We pay far too little attention to that. Because if you're gonna do control, you've gotta know the causes. Right. And then if you do control, you better worry about all the stability issues, all the unmodeled dynamics that you're possibly exciting by putting your control in there. Because stability in systems that are time critical and are death uh, critical is, is going to cause chaos. Right? So I just think uh, we're, we're way unprepared for this. And I also think maybe my last point is the critical, a critical issue we have to face in this community is how to talk about our work without all the hype. And how to take on projects that aren't like AlphaGo, that's sure to create a storm of publicity and then a storm of discussion about future robots taking over 
and a storm of talk about how intelligent everything is when we know it's not, which is nonsense. And, and, and just a storm of things that have nothing to do with the real problems is that we're about ready to build big systems that go out and get deployed and are going to cause lots and lots of problems. And so let's take on problems that aren't AlphaGo. Let's take on real problems that have to do with water and health and climate and stuff like that that aren't going to go into the New York Times, but are rather going to make a real impact on real lives and make our, our world a better place. And, and not go for this, we're the glorious new wave of uh, you know, exciting computer scientists who are you know, uh, going to create superhumans. So I, I think we're somehow, it's got, we've gotten taken over by, uh, by that spirit of it's got to be this you know, super grandiose thing. And uh, I just, I, 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 I don't recognize it. This is not the world I want to be in. Let's uh, thank the panelists for these. Uh...